Hey guys, it's Miss Holdridge. Today is my favorite kind of lab day. It's the day where we talk about art and science and we get to combine them together. Now, you guys have been talking about properties of matter and we've looked at sorting them by texture, by temperature, lots of different ways. Today we're gonna to be talking about what happens when we take some of our solids and we add heat to them. If you were here last year, you remember that we did that um, on one awesome day where we took our solid, which was a crayon, we took several crayons, and we ended up melting them by using the heat from my oven here in the lab. Today we're not gonna melt anything, but we're actually going to um, create a um, replica, which means like a copy of, um, a famous artist's painting. And he did something amazing, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. This is Salvador Dali. He was a famous artist, really well known for a kind of art called surrealism. He was born in 1904 in Spain, and <laughs> I love this picture of him. He looks like he was probably a pretty fun guy. What's surrealism, you might be asking? A bunch of these paintings that I'm about to show you are all examples of surrealism. They're normal everyday objects and things like the sun here, but instead of it just being a sun, it looks like the middle of a hard boiled egg. And I like this painting right here. Instead of the gentleman's face just being regular, he has an apple in front of him. Look at this sun behind a cloud of lips. Look at these men floating in the air. These are all examples of surrealism, normal everyday things that are turned into something that are kind of fantasy-like, not real. This is the famous Salvador Dali painting called The Persistence of Memory. And if you notice, it looks like there are lots and lots of clocks hanging around and off of branches, all melted looking. This is what Salvador Dali was really well known for, one of his most famous works of art. And today, we're gonna use this to talk about what happens when we actually apply heat to solids, like a clock. Look how they're melted. It's so cool. Today, we're gonna draw a melting clock and paint it. So here's what you're gonna need to make something that looks like this. You're gonna need a sheet of white paper, a paintbrush, water, and some tempera paint. Make sure you have some black and some other bold colors that you might really enjoy using. Now the tempera paint I'm using is dried and I have to add water to it. So yours is probably moist and already wet and ready to go. I decided to pick a bold teal color because I really like this one. Notice how I'm just gently dipping my brush in, going in one direction. I don't want to split my bristles up or give my paintbrush a bad hair day. Now, I'm painting the outline of my clock first. Remember that if your clock is melted, it's not going to be a perfect circle, which is pretty cool if you're not a very good artist. When you're done, it's going to look something like this. Now, the next thing we need to do is start filling in our clock with that same color. We want it to be bold and bright and really just kind of in your face. Now, this is what my finished outline and fill in look like when I'm all done. Don't worry if it's not super duper neat. We're gonna be able to clean that up in just a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is paint in our background. I chose a color kind of opposite of my gorgeous teal. I picked yellow because it's bright and it'll make my teal color pop off the page. You can paint yours in now. Don't worry if you get some of the colors mixed together, like my teal and my yellow. You can see spots where they kind of blend together and make a green. We're gonna neaten that up in just a minute. Once you get your background painted, we need to outline our clock. That's why I said don't worry if you mess up. Watch Miss Holdridge go in and do it. As I do it, I start to notice that my black is fading a little bit. So I have to add more color to my brush to get that really bold black line. And I'm just kind of neatening up the 
the outside a little bit of my melted clock, maybe where the yellow and the teal kind of mix together, it's gonna look really clean when I'm done with it. I'm gonna go all around the clock and I'm gonna use my black and I'm gonna add more color to my brush if I need it. Now, once you get that done, we need to add our numbers and I have a trick for that. Start at the very top center of your clock. That's where we're gonna put our 12. Remember, your numbers are gonna look kind of melted too. Then go to the right hand side of your clock, kind of in the middle, and add your three right towards the edge. Now opposite the 12, that's where we're gonna put our six at the bottom. And then on the opposite side of the three, we're gonna add our nine. That helps us get the rest of our numbers in about the right space. Now if you notice, my right side of the clock is much more melted than the left side. So those numbers are gonna look really melted compared to the rest of the hours that are on the left side of my clock. And right now, I'm just filling them in and adding more black when I need to, like right now. I'll do my 10 and then my 11. Now it's time to add in your hour and minute hands. The cool thing is you get to decide what time your clock started melting. So I'm gonna add the center part and I put my long minute hand facing the one just because that's what I felt like doing. And then my hour hand is gonna be in between the four and the five. You choose where you want your clock time to be stopping at. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with and the colors that you choose. Guys, you can get really creative with this. Your clock can be as melted as you want it to be. Um, and your numbers could even be dripping off the clock and down the face of the clock, the center of it. The hands could be dripping down too. It's gonna look so awesome. Boys and girls, remember, I'm just gonna use this sheet of paper, that you wanna use the whole space of your paper. Don't draw a really small clock in there. It's not gonna be very interesting looking and it's gonna be hard to get your numbers and the hands of the clock on the face. So use the whole paper to do that. I cannot wait to see your finished products. Have mom, dad, or grandma, whoever you're with, take a photo of it and upload it to my Google Classroom. I can't wait to show your teachers all of the amazing things that you end up painting. Don't forget, guys, if you don't like the way it turns out, or maybe you mess up, nobody is born making perfect art. And it's something we even have to practice sometimes, like sports or singing or math. So do your very best job. And if you don't like the copy that you made um, of Salvador Dali's uh, Persistence of Memory, then what you can do is you could create another one and then just choose which one you want to send me. I can't wait to see you guys. I miss y'all and love you. Y'all have a great day. Bye.